on, on into our flight path. Uh, we're set to get uh, started going to go shots in the next uh, three to four minutes. vlogs this vlog is really special I am coming to you as uh, from actually from an interview that I'm on uh, I'm not gonna tell you where just yet but uh, uh, once all of those things are set in place then I will kind of tell you a little bit about the interview process it is the end of the week uh, it's actually a Friday and I was able to take the day away from clinical responsibilities to be able to travel and attend this interview. Um, so I was very fortunate to be able to have that opportunity. Today I met with the doctors who are part of the uh, neurosurgical practice and it was very nice to meet with them and got a lot of interesting uh, perspective from them as well as a lot of tips and things to keep in mind as I progress throughout my residency but also as I transition into practice myself. I'll make sure to keep you guys updated as the process unfolds and we'll see how it goes. Coming to you from the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center this weekend. I am the chief resident of the Ohio State University Neurosurgery Service. Um, I am have been the chief now for about a month. Wanted to come and talk to you guys a little bit about my reflection on the uh, position as chief resident, some of the responsibilities some of the uh, cases that I've been able to, to do as chief resident of the neurosurgery service, and also just kind of my overall impression and uh, uh, share my overall thoughts and insights. So here we go. So this month has been incredibly busy. I have been uh, able to do a number of variety of surgeries. The chief resident of the service, the first choice as to which surgeries we're going to participate and help on. Uh, and so that often leads to us being able to, to do and to be participate in some of the very complex cases that we do here in neurosurgery at Ohio State. In addition to my surgical responsibilities, I have additional responsibilities such as making the schedule for the various residents, including vacation schedules, call schedules, um, coordinating these with all the other residents, making sure that uh, people who are taking a vacation time or parental leave get those times uh, situated, uh, but also making sure that the service runs smoothly, making sure that not too many people are away at one time, as well as delegating some of the other responsibilities of things that come up. In addition to these administrative duties, I also have clinical service duties. Um, basically, every morning I'm responsible for the entire patient list that I'm in charge of. Our neurosurgery service has three different sub-services and they're split up into a tumor service, a vascular service, and a spine service. Currently, I'm the chief of the spine service and two other residents are chiefs of the other services. So every morning, we come in and we discuss the any of the consults that uh, uh, are there for spine patients and I look through all the images, I help to determine the plans, we determine which patients needed to be rounded on that morning, we go see the, those patients, and then afterwards I call the attendings with the plans and communicate those plans to the intern. Uh, after that part is done, the intern then carries out those plans, checking on patients' labs, making sure imaging is getting done, pulling drains, coordinating discharges, those sort of things. During the day, after I give the plans to the interns, I then head to the OR 
and I'm able to participate in surgery and then obviously if things come up during the day, any new patients that need urgent attention, any other uh, uh, hiccups with any of the discharges or any patients with new clinical concerns, I'm then uh, the intern then communicates with me and then we kind of develop plans and then uh, address those issues as they come up. So overall, I'm really enjoying this new role. It's been very busy, but also incredibly rewarding. I've been able to uh, really feel like I'm making a difference in the patient's care and really helping to advance their care. Uh, really the attention to detail goes a long way uh, in helping to make sure that patients are well taken care of. I'm also really enjoying the case selection aspect of being a chief resident. Uh, as I kind of mentioned, I'm able to do a lot of the complex surgeries or even uh, able to get experience in um, very focused things that I really want to gain experience in, such as minimally invasive spine surgery, such as uh, complex tumor surgery, and also vascular, open vascular surgery. So these are sort of the three, the three pinnacles of things that I'm most interested in. And this year for me, I've been able to really focus on these things so far just this past month and really, really hone my skills uh, for these things. So I'm very much looking forward to the remainder of the year being able to uh, get some additional experience and uh, become really a masterful surgeon, especially in these specific areas. And then generally, overall, this I'm, I'm really enjoying the sort of management and leadership role in terms of the clinical service. I've been able to coordinate with the residents in making the call schedule, making weekend schedules, making sure people are still getting time off, time away, uh, vacation time when they're asking and when they're requesting, but also ensuring that service runs smoothly and that we're doing exceptional patient care. So really being able to focus on resident wellness and resident well-being in addition to providing exceptional patient care is, is something that I've really enjoyed being able to participate in and, and uh, take a leadership role in. So with that said, I want to talk to you a little bit about the cases that I've been doing and kind of go through my case log just so you get an idea of some of the variety and complexity of cases that I've been able to participate in. It's been really quite remarkable. First of all, I have this planner here. I uh, want to show you guys this planner has been really amazing. I'm able to track all of my cases and procedures that I do on a daily basis, as well as other notes that I have taken for patients or for clinical things or things that I need to follow up on. So as for work, it's been sort of an area where I can keep everything all in one place. I'll show you a little bit about kind of what the planner looks like. So you can see here, it has a space, so it has space per day. Uh, basically every day I get a section where I can put patient stickers and write down their uh, cases that I do. Uh, just kind of showing you the layout, uh, not a lot of space. And what I do is I keep this planner open on my desk and every day when I do a surgery, I collect a sticker, put the sticker, as well as write a little note or just uh, you know something I've learned during the case. Um, whether it be about a technical nuance in terms of surgery or about some uh, new type of equipment that I, that I was able to use or just something about uh, patient management or something that was interesting about the case. So for this month, um, I've done a total of uh, 46 cases, uh, which is a pretty good amount in, uh, of, of surgery, especially considering the fact that uh, I've been choosing a lot of the more complex cases and these tend to be longer surgeries. Um, I've been able to to do uh, seven brain tumors. I've been able to do four spine tumors. Uh, I've been able to do 15 spine procedures, uh, such as like uh, A lifts or T lifts, uh, even X lifts as well. And then I've been able to do four deformity spine surgeries, a um, couple of surgeries for microvascular decompression for patients with trigeminal neuralgia, uh, number of trauma hemicraniectomy surgeries where we have to decompress the, uh, the, the brain and we do that by removing essentially half of the patient's skull to allow the brain uh, enough room to swell and to decompress. 
Um, some of the notable spine surgeries that I've done this month, I've done a total of four deformity spine surgeries. Basically two surgeries that were T4 to pelvis fusion surgeries and two surgeries that have been T10 to the pelvis fusion surgeries. Um, I've done an OC fusion, basically where we fuse the patient's occiput to the cervical spine. I've done a, an aneurysm clipping. I've done an AVM resection surgery. I've done a carotid and arterectomy surgery, as well as I've done a surgery for Moya Moya disease called an EDAS procedure. So uh, all in all, this has been a very busy month. I just kind of went through some of those complex cases that I've do been doing. I had a really terrific time. Every day is I'm able to learn a lot uh, of, of uh, new things and it's really been a great surgical experience for me. I have also been trying my hardest to maintain a uh, level of fitness and proper nutrition you know that's something that you guys know is very very important to me I believe it's very important to be able to to take care of yourself so that you can be the best version of yourself in order to take care of your patients in order to be there for your family when needed and also to be a well-rounded person you know one of the things that I have been doing now for the past two years ever since actually COVID began is having overnight oats I find that starting my day with a very healthy, filling, nutritious breakfast is something that is really gives me a lot of energy and uh, puts me in a good state of mind for the whole day to come. And also what's been so valuable is something I've been able to do consistently because it takes very little time and it doesn't disrupt my morning routine. So even as a very busy neurosurgery resident, I've been able to keep up this healthy habit and been able to really uh, continue getting enough uh, nutrition for my body, especially early in the morning. Uh, it's something that's really helped me. I recommend overnight oats to everybody and I get a lot, a lot of questions. Uh, people asking me for my overnight oats recipe, people asking me for my morning routine, uh, people asking me how I'm able to maintain this level of uh, health and wellness despite my very busy schedule. So now I wanna take this time, I've actually taken some videos of myself making overnight oats. And this is something that I do every evening. I make it in the evening and I'm ready to take it into work in the morning. I just put it in my bag and, and I eat uh, those oats at work while I'm doing my chart review. So I wanna share that recipe with you guys. Hope you guys enjoy that recipe. Um, it's very tasty, nutritious, has a lot of protein, and also it uh, takes very little time. So it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, hope you check it out and please let me know if you enjoy it and uh, let me know if you have your own overnight oats recipe. I'd love to try different things as well, different ingredients, different combinations. So uh, make sure you write down in the comments below if, if you have any other suggestions for overnight oats as well. I'd be happy to hear them. Thanks and uh, hope to catch you guys soon on our next video and I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. So here I'm starting my overnight oats. I've added oats and almond milk. Now I'm adding a scoop of chocolate protein powder I prefer to use the Optimum Nutrition Protein Powder. I feel like it mixes much better than all the other types of protein powder that I've tasted. I also add about a tablespoon of peanut butter to the recipe and then uh, some additional milk. Once I do that, I mix everything together, make it a nice consistency. Here I'm showing you my superfood station. I like to add a variety of superfoods to this, which include cacao powder or cacao nibs, goji berries, some sunflower seeds, coconut shreds, I really like the taste of coconut in the oats, hemp seeds, these have a lot of uh, omega and uh, uh, fatty acids and also additional protein and also here I'm showing you adding chia seeds so I layer these in the oats and I like to do this just sort of make it a little bit aesthetic as well I find uh, you know food that it also looks appealing tends to taste better and it makes me feel better when I eat aesthetic appearing food as well and so it's sort of become part of my routine that I enjoy doing this and adding also the goji berries. To this I always add a little bit of fruit. Here I'm adding some blueberries. 
some other options would be banana or raspberries um, and that's it and I'm having this with my espresso so guys thank you for joining me for this vlog hope you learned something a little bit about my time as chief resident as well as a little bit about how I try to stay healthy which includes having these overnight oats stay tuned for more like this and additional content to follow thanks for joining me and see you guys next time